Sri Lanka's most powerful news brand. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali. And a jolly good morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Colombo. And we, of course, we broadcast on TV One, which is part of the Capital Maharaja Group. And today is two years plus one day. That's two years old, TV One, as of yesterday. And intending to get stronger as we go along. And uh, to uh, uh, whilst we wish you a great week ahead, uh, some of the burning issues are still here with us. And to discuss some of those things, three rather very specific points, is Mr. Rusri Pala Tenakun. Very good morning to you, Mr. Rusri Pala. Good morning, Pala. Let me congratulate you for your second anniversary. First. Indeed. It's, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, it TV is. TV One, we've been here. And how time has flown. Oh, yes, and our association very closely with it. And uh, in the last two years, we've reported so much yes. about uh, various departures from procedure, from established practice, and uh, uh, the fight to actually deliver good governance. In the last two years, it has been ever so intense. And we are continuing. And we continue. <laughs> and we shall continue. Yeah. Now then, Mr. Rizipala, I first thought, three questions this morning. The first of all, can you tell me please, what does the Commission say about the role of the Prime Minister in this affair, this bond gate affair? What is the role? What do they say? For us it's a very, very appropriate and timely question because we talk very much about the role of the Prime Minister by ourselves. But the, the viewers and the country to whom uh, still the, the report is not available in that form may be wondering whether what we say really is correct or not. That's therefore, right. Therefore, it is very appropriate for us to just at least brush through, yeah. brush through what the Commission has to say That's the most important about the thing. Prime Minister's role. Now, there is a chapter, yeah. separate chapter in the Commission report, yeah. chapter 26, yeah. titled the Honourable Prime Minister's role in matters relevant to our mandate. Now, the mandate of the Commission. Yes. Now, that is, they are qualifying their position beginning itself. They say relevant to our mandate. What does it mean? It means if it is going beyond the mandate, there are so many things that they wish to say, yeah. but they are confining their findings to the frames of the mandate. As they should. As they should. Yeah. As they should. Yeah. Uh, in as much as they really like to know the entire episode of it, but then yeah. uh, there are limitations to things. Quite. Now they they make a couple of references which warrants careful examination, mm. because I mean, the idea is yeah. we we cast aspersions and we say all kinds of things, and then people must be wondering whether that is justified. Mm. So now the only way that we can do is yeah. why we are doing it and with what background and correct authority that we are doing what we are doing. Yeah. So therefore, I will refer to a few references that they have made. Number one is, uh, they say about the selection of Arjuna Mahendran, mm. which is exclusively the responsibility of the Prime Minister, nobody has denied it so far. And uh, it has been reconfirmed and double confirmed and strongly confirmed due to statements made by the president himself, yeah. he said, I, I asked you not to appoint. Yeah, okay. I mean, that's at, at least it is reported in the media. Indeed. So, therefore, in that context, the, I think the, the, the commission has addressed that issue mm. and they say, mm. while we say that it is not a legal issue, legally there is no barricade for the prime minister to have made this selection, there is another factor that. In is, terms of uh, Mr. Mahendran's nationality. Mr. Mahendran's appointment yeah. and the nationality. Yeah. You see, and they say categorically there is another factor which should have been in consider, that is the value judgment. Right. Now, Faraz, this is a very, very striking comment in the sense that what does it mean? Yeah. Do they mean to say that there has been no value judgment in this appointment, making this appointment? Is it what they mean? Yeah. Um, this is left to us to design. Mm. The words are clear. Mm. They say it is not. They, we don't hold it as a illegal thing. Yeah. But then, there are, there are 
relevant factors. One factor is the value judgment. Now, Varas, from what has happened in retrospect and hindsight, yeah. we can see the gravity of the uh, non-consideration of uh, relevant factors yeah. at the time of appointment because today you see after all this happened where is Mahendra? Yeah. Mahendra is not in the country. Yeah. At least it leaves us open with the question although what the Attorney General says that you know he can be charged, he can be brought. All those things are we are yet to see you know. But yeah. we are confronted with a issue right now. Yeah. This issue should not have been there. Yeah. If due consideration was given to this appointment at the time of making the appointment. Now, you might say, how can one in foresight say that this, there is going to be something like this happening? Well, yes, I mean, to be fair, that it's, it's a uh, <clears throat> value judgment, you know, in, in hindsight. You know, hindsight's a wonderful notion. But uh, to be fair, he, he couldn't possibly have known uh, <laughs> what uh, this person is going to do or not do. Well, he was hoping he'd do all the right things. I fully agree with you, Faraz. Yeah. If we trace back to the history, I do not know why he failed to assess the possibilities of risks involved yeah. when MPs in the opposition and various other people who were concerned <coughs> with this matter mm. were vehemently expressing, vehemently expressing their you know, disagreement with the appointment of a person, a non-citizen. Mm. They foresaw it. There could be a danger of this nature. Mm. So why did the ambit of the uh, value judgment mm. from the Prime Minister did not encompass that factor? Right. The second issue. Okay. The second issue is, now, there is another thing that is, they, they say. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. We need to go for a short break. So, okay. Sorry to interrupt you. We'll be, be right back with you. Uh, don't go away. After all, this is Newsline. We'll be right back. Roz Shalkutali. And uh, welcome back for that short break. Thank you very much for indulging me. Uh, now, Mr. Rispala, what, what are, very quickly, what are the remedial measures? But as there are there are two two or three aspects, you know, the people are waiting. They know that legal action has to be uh, commenced. Uh, the bribery actions have to be commenced. Well, those things take little time. But there are some actions Everything that can takes time, Mr. Of course, we have to be very patient about it. You know, I mean, you can't rush through these things. Unfortunately, we have to bear with it. So, I mean, in a, in a very very positive sense, we have to. Uh, but there are certain things that the executive power. Yeah. The power of the executive power of the country can immediately take. Now right. take for example, uh, the taking over of the functions of the, the responsible minister yeah. uh, or taking over the functions of the, the removal of the functions of the central bank falling within the purview of a different are you, are you Are you alluding to what His Excellency the President said that he is going to take in, to be, what did he say? He said he will take, he will run the economy. That's, that's, that's in the broader concept. That's yeah. a very much broader and a wider concept. Mm. I think not related to the bond issue. No, no. Yeah. I mean, what he says is for two and a half years or nearly three years, the entire economic management was rested in the in one of the coalition partners, the UNP yeah. of the government. Yeah. So if he has he passes judgment due to various uh, reactions of the public, yeah. uh, the feedbacks that he is getting. His own observation. So that, that's actually that's what uh, that's what his job is, really, isn't it? He has to know because, yes, of because he, he reflects the people's uh, his pulses uh, with the people. The sovereignty of the people was exercised to elect him as a president for six years. Indeed. So I mean, five six. That's a different issue. Yes, yes. But the now the people expected him to deliver certain things, yeah. and not only they did they expect. The president himself announced and pronounced that this is what he is going to do. Yeah. So, but then there we, we saw very clearly a very bad mix up of the thinking, the thought processes Indeed. of the policy makers. Yeah. Like, you know, one going in one direction, open market economy, you know, advocating various yeah. new things, modern things, yeah. high, high sounding things, high tech things. Yeah. 
Whereas there was another school of thought. Yeah. You know, the local resources, mm. the country's resources, the poverty, mm. addressing of the immediate requirements of the people. Mm. So these, these two appeared to be going in two mm. different directions. Mm. So the president, lately though, at this moment of time, deciding that he should take over the economy, yeah. it's a big challenge. After all, it's not a question of merely taking. Yeah. He has to deliver it within a short period yes. of time. Yes. And if he is confident that he can take it over and deliver it to the satisfaction of the masses of this country. Right. That is what we want. Mm. That Let that be the start. Let that be the issue that has to be addressed positively, correctly and uh, on, a, on the basis of a priority. Yeah. So people expect that. So therefore, we hail the decision, we, we praise the decision, we appreciate that even at this late hour, the President is taking upon himself a challenge, far as I want to tell one thing. If this materializes, yeah. you will be rest assured yeah. that there will be a number of local economists and experts from a local background who will volunteer to give the support to the President to exercise what he wants in yeah. this direction. So, <clears throat> no, then, sorry. Um, in as much as these these uh, remedial measures uh, for the bond, yeah. you know, when we look at, um, uh, let's say, the highways, the Central Expressway, Section yeah. Three, for example. Yes, we've just been. It, it's a matter that's been in the public domain for a while, uh, but yesterday, uh, I think, a gentleman from the uh, two days ago. Uh, Priyanta Ratnaika from the uh, External Resources uh, Department uh, gave an interview with one of the press uh, and he disclosed in, during that uh, sort of uh, interaction that uh, the Sri Lankan government would have to pay an astonishing uh, over 10% in insurance payments yeah. uh, for that loan for yeah. coming from, yeah. uh, from a Japanese bank yes. uh, to fund this thing. Yeah. It was 14 billion rupees, for heaven's sake. Yes. That's 10 point, um, I made that 10.04 percent. Yeah. Right? Now, he also said that the the sort of going rate, if you like, was around 7.5 percent. Yes. Yes. Even that's high. But in, and then he said that it was because of the commitment, uh, the Sri Lanka's commitment to so many uh, repayments. And that was the concern. And that's why this is going at such a high amount. Yes. Um, <clears throat> now, Mr. Rusipala, on the one hand, you have we are paying so much more because of some uh, unfortunate circumstance that we are in. Yeah. But then we find that this entire process is flawed because the established procedure is flawed. They they introduce uh, Lakshman Kiriyalis. This comes under his ministry, like it or not, <laughs> right? And the Lakshman Kiriyalis ministry. They suddenly they announce a tender. Then they bring one company in. They've got no bid bond. Then they bring another company in. Then, then the whole process is going. Then they pass a cabinet paper saying, oh, no, we'll, we'll stop this one because we've got another unsolicited bid from one of the bidders. This, this whole thing stinks to high heaven. Yeah. What can we do about that? No, Farah, there are, there are a couple of other important aspects involved in this thing. You are absolutely correct when you say that the insurance premium that has come in, which is extremely high and unprecedented, yeah. and from world standards to be to be to be standardized as excessive, mm. I should say, mm. and even the standards that they seem to those experts seem to be pointing out at seven. You know the reason behind it. It is not uh, due to anything else. The the insurance people who are setting those standards and uh, uh, benchmarks are doing it for one reason. The, the, the economic management assessment they have about, uh, the, about the economic management of this country. You see, a country can be debt-ridden. Still, if they feel, if the lenders and the institutions that guarantee such uh, transactions feel that the economy is in good hands, Mm. They won't benchmark a high rate like this, an yeah. absurd rate. So this shows yeah. that they have serious doubts about the management of the economy. Therefore, 
in order to safeguard the, the cover the risks, to safeguard the interests of the lenders, they put these high benchmarks. This is the secret of it. This is the economy of it. You know. So when you consider that, what yes. you've just said, then yes. of course what uh, it, it is even uh, more uh, appropriate and urgent that these remedial measures uh, on the bond issue must be put into place because we also have remedial measures with Sri Lankan Airlines, for example. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Now you see, uh, one other aspect about the highways thing is, yeah. even, the, even the engineering aspect, you know that that part of the those parts of the road which were meant to be on a higher level, yeah. elevated level. Yeah. You know the uh, arbitrary decisions have been taken. Yeah. For what are they engineering decisions? Are they decisions that are taken with the background of a structural ne uh, change requirement? No, they are they are taken for various other reasons, mm. which cannot be substantiated which cannot be substantiated, especially mm. in the eyes of those people yeah. who want to secure their lending, yeah. who want to safeguard the, the cover, the risks. Yeah. You see, they, they, it, those are the factors that have added on to this insurance element. A, a viewer is saying, who yeah. is the insurance agent of the highways ministry? <laughs> well, uh, and uh, there is a suggestion that this company uh, may be related to somebody or other at the ministry. This is what we are seeing. No our day. investigation teams on it. I am sure, I am sure your investigations eyes will fall on many things. There are, you know, we, this government started on a very sound footing when they started functioning yeah. at the very beginning. Yeah. They said we are not going to accept any unsolicited proposals. Right. What we heard even recently, most recently, unsolicited uh, proposals are coming. They are being placed before the cabinet. Yeah. And the cabinet seems to be uh, accepting those. Well, and also there's that CCM, that seems to be a very powerful tool. It's almost like a cabinet within the cabinet. This is the problem. I mean, these are the issues that, le that lead to hmm. a decision making at this crucial moment whether the economic management should be in better, better managed and in better control. You see? Now, when we see a violation of their own principles which they have advocated. Yeah. We don't want to go for unsolicited. And when we find that the unsolicited uh, uh, proposals are coming from parties related to ministers in the cabinet, my God, I do not know how, how you can justify that in the eyes of good governance. But some of these uh, ministers say that, look, we, I didn't know that this company belonged to my son. Brothers, sons. Why? You've got children, you've yeah. got sons. At this, right this moment, are you able to tell me what you, you, do you know what your sons do? Well, forget the father-son relationship. Yeah. At least in the matter of awarding a tender or a contract or entertaining a proposal, yeah. you have to exercise some diligence. There is a process called due diligence in everything. If you can't bypass the due diligence and say, I did not know what my son was doing, yeah. what my wife was doing, yeah. you can't. Because if it is not your personal interest, okay, you are entitled to have that. But your due diligence process in the matter of handling public finances is a thing that you cannot bypass and overlook. Mm. Who can do that? There is no authority or mandate to do that. The moment you resort to do that, you are violating the principles of uh, management of the, of the economy and administration of funds belonging to the government. Now, with, with Sri Lankan Airlines, yes. when they cancelled the A350s, uh, so, uh, a real uh, anomaly has happened. Initially, Kabir Hashim <coughs> presented a cabinet paper, which was passed by cabinet, yeah. saying that the up to 85 million dollars yes. would uh, was passed up to 85 million to settle the cancellation charges yeah all right yeah thereafter <laughs> through the ccem yeah this is not i'm not making it up we stand by all what i'm saying okay there was a cabinet paper presented by the former finance minister in which they said that it was 150 million dollars so 154 Thirty-nine or fifty-four. One fifty-four. One fifty-four. Yeah. All right. 
Now then, well, 151, 54, much higher than that. Yeah. Kabir Hashim raised the stink, and so on and so forth. Now, when you cancel these transactions, you either pay Airbus, the manufacturer, or you pay the lease with the company that's doing the lease. Yeah. Now, the money here was paid to what we call an orphan trust. And uh, we know for a fact that investigations, investigators, went to uh, Hong Kong to, uh, to have a look at this. But it's an orphan trust. An orphan trust is usually used, as you probably already know. Uh, it's paid, it's a real live entity, and it's true that that various payments that couldn't ordinarily be made can be paid out. <laughs> yeah. The orphan trust is to the call and control of the beneficiaries. Yeah. Now then, why all this skullduggery, or a parent's skullduggery? Okay, so you've taken a decision, right, whether it's good or bad, you know, you have to pay. But why can't we have it transparent? Why can't we just pay Airbus? Or why can't we pay directly the leaseholder? No, Maharaj. I mean, you, you go to the beginning of this again. Yeah. The responsibility of making a statement public or yeah. make the public know yeah. that this is the amount to be paid and when that is made by the minister in charge of the subject. Yeah. And in a matter of weeks, you know, when it, it shoots up to say uh, uh, about 154 million dollars yeah. Yeah. instead of the, the, the 60 odd million that was uh, earlier said. Yeah. You see the difference in these amounts? Number one, the irresponsibility of making that first announcement. Yeah. Number two, the amount involved between the dif as the difference. Huge! I mean, when it works out to nearly a billion of rupees, when it comes to rupees. So therefore, this somebody has to take in a democracy the responsibility for these things. You know, we keep on accusing, he said this, he said this. Yes, but now, now, now I'm going to come back to that commission before. Yeah. Because over there, and yeah. because we mentioned Kabir Hashim's name, yeah. now I'm going to say this to you. Yeah. you I know you've read that. Thing. Yeah. Now then, in there, yeah. the commissioners say, talking about Mr. Mahendran, yes. they say that Mr. Mahendran's representations, yes. that there was a funding requirement yes. of so many billion for the, to, to pay for the contractors, that, that requirement, the commissioners found evidence and they describe it, those representations by Mr. Mahendran, as false. Exactly. Now, doesn't it therefore follow that the minister in charge of the highways at that time is also responsible? Many things follow for us. Not only that, all those who because gave Because, Mr. Chishpala, one more thing. Whilst Mr. Hashim and Malik Samri Vikram also said that there was this requirement, da, 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 we must also bear in mind that the deputy secretary to the treasury denied it denied it under oath. He yeah. stole the commission. There was no such requirement. Yeah, yeah. It follows into many things for us. Those people who tried to justify that there was an additional requirement of funds urgently yeah. and those and the, uh, the statement made by the Prime Minister based on those things into par in the Parliament, endorsing that. Yeah. And worse, a certificate being given or issued to Mahendran to be shown to the commission about the requirement in writing signed by the then Minister of Finance. So all these things are involved factors, involved factors. So they need the explanation. The commission has only by saying. Tell me quickly the remedial measures. The, the, by quick by saying, stating that the, the position taken by Arjuna Mahendran is false. It leads to many other things. The quick, the quickest remedial position is, you know, the action that is executively ex, the executive can take yeah. uh, without going through the or without waiting for the legal processes. Yeah. All those appointments made under the former Minister of Finance, yeah. they have to be addressed immediately and changed. 
because they have been part and parcel in some way or the other. Should all these appointments made by these people who have been now found to be involved in this uh, Bondgate matter, yeah, uh, you know, Kabir Hashim, everybody, yeah, those appointments made by them, yes. in, of their officials, yes. their people, yes. shouldn't it? Ma- wouldn't it make sense to get rid of those people? Definitely, or to have them change. Definitely, it has to be done because these are all political appointments. These are yeah. not appointments given, you know, like They're the not professional. Well, they are not professional appointments. Yeah. You see, anybody can be the chairman. Yeah. So like that, you know, it has been done. So the very fact that the, the actions of the person who decided on the appointments are become questionable now, yeah. Yeah. definitely his decision uh, to appoint these people is also becoming questionable. Therefore, the best thing is, now we are come to a very critical point when if the economic affairs are taken over by the president, yeah. And if he's going to entrust it to a committee or a control or whatever, yeah. you know, of, uh, of a transparent, yeah. knowledgeable, yeah. Uh, national interest people, yeah. I mean, then they will definitely address this issue. They have to do that. Not only in the context of the... Let us forget this bond issue for a moment. Yeah. The sake of the country's economy, expectations of the people, the trust placed on the president, all that is important now. He is going around the country and, and telling this. Why? He has been compelled to address that situation according to the situation that is brewing up. Yeah. Because the expectations of the people, at least one large majority section of the people, getting distanced, mm. getting distanced, the false promises, various things, you know, become they mere political statements. They are not economic policies. You know, there is a wide difference. Just sound bites. Just sound bites, you know. There is a big difference between economic plans and political statements. Okay. We are now saddled with the problem, yeah. which is a political just jargon, and which is a sound economic policy, backed by a perfect assessment of the futuristic situations. I mean, we are baffled by that in this mm. country, mm. with so many economic policies coming one after the other, being addressed here and there. In Kuliapitiya, it is one po- one policy. In Hambantote, it is another policy. When you go to some other place, it is another policy. I mean, this is absurd for us. It's a bit, it's a complete ego. mishmash. I mean, the people must understand, you know, the entire economic pattern is one, one, just one plate. We want everything on a plate. They are in, they are served in dishes. <laughs> Right. Thank you, uh, Mr. Rusri Paratelakun. How time flies when you're having a good time. And uh, thank you for these messages. One says, congratulations, TV1, second anniversary. A superb service to the public. All the best. And thank you from um, Neuralia and thank you from everywhere that we've had these wonderful messages. It really is uplifting. And uh, I've certainly enjoyed it in the last two years and uh, continue to enjoy it. And I hope and I'm happy that all of you viewers out there are enjoying it too. We promise to be simply the best. On that note, thank you, Mr. Rusipala Tenekun, and that's the way it was on Newsline. Take care. God bless. News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukutali.